Hi, and welcome to this new section of our course. In this section, we'll talk about Git administration. So, we will talk about the task that everyone needs to do when they work on their repositories. So, we will start with a process that is called the garbage collection. This is required to keep our repository nice and clean and do not waste too much space on our disk. Then we will talk about a serious problem that is data recovery, how we can recover the commits that we think that are lost. And then at the end of the section, we will see how easy it is to create a new Git server, because sometimes you want to use GitHub or Bitbucket, but sometimes you want to just use your own resources. And we can see how easy it is to create a new Git server using just a Linux machine and SSH connection. Let's start with our first video. Today we are going to talk about uh, repository maintenance. First, we need to talk about uh, how Git stores all the information into something that is called a Git object. And then we will see with a real example of how those objects can uh, end up to take a lot of disk space. And we will learn uh, how to solve and reduce the disk space using Git garbage collection. As I said uh, during the intro, Git stores all the information into files that are called the Git objects. And there are three types of objects. Uh, there are commits, there are blobs, and there are trees. And all of them are stored into the .git slash object folder. I'll give you immediately one example. Let's uh, initialize a brand new repository with uh, git init. Maybe let's call this repository git objects. Now we go inside this uh, folder and we can add a new line into a sample file. And we can create our first commit. So we have this brand new repository with one single file and one commit. Let's see how many objects do we have into this git object folder. What we can see now is that we have three files. That means that we have three objects. And the SHA one of the object, it's also the name of the file. But with one limitation, because if we put all the objects inside one folder, this folder can contain a limited amount of files. So to do not hit this limit, Git uses a trick. It uses the first two characters of the SHA-1 to create a subfolders, and then the remaining 39 characters are used to name the file. We can check the type of the object with a command that is called the git cut file. And then we pass it to this command the option minus t to specify that we want to know the type. And then we need to pass the SHA-1 of the object, that in this case it starts with the 3b, and then this one. This first object is a blob, then we have a tree, and then we have a commit object. Also see what is inside the object with the same command, with instead of passing the t parameters, we can pass the p parameters, that stands for print. For example, we can print what is inside this object here, inside the commit object, re-executing the same command with the minus p. And this object contains exactly the commit that we normally use. And also, additionally, this SHA-1 of this object is exactly the same SHA-1 that we see when we do git log. It is exactly the same. The other really interesting object is the blob. The blob object contains the content of a file. So if we print the content of this object, so 3b, let's replace t with p, we will see that the content of this object is hello world, that is exactly the content of the full bar file. The information that is missing here is the name of the file, where this information is stored. This information is stored into the remaining objects, that is the tree object. If we print this one, we can see that this object contains exactly the reference to the blob object 3b18, that is this one, and specifies the name of the file. So we have basically here all the information that we need. Now everything is nice and clean, but one downside of this approach is that if we try to do a small changes into this foo.bar files and we recommit again, we will see that Git creates a new completely blob file that contains the whole foobar file, generating basically a duplicate of the file every time that we commit. 
And uh, to show you this problem, I created uh, another repository that is uh, exactly like this one. So it's a brand new repository with one single file. But the file, instead of containing just a uh, hello world, contains more than uh, 10,000 line of code. So it's a really big repository. I am inside of this uh, new repository and uh, you can see that we have only one file. And this file is pretty big, it's 230k of data. And also we have only one commit. We can see the list of objects inside this repository with a little bit more detail than what we did before with a different command that says git cut file and then two options. And here we have the list of objects with the left the shell one of the object. Then on the right we have the type of the object and the size that this object takes on the, on the disk. Now I will try to append one line to this file and recommit again. And we can see how many objects are then created. Let's print again the list of objects. And we have now six objects. That is what we expect. But the bad thing is that we have two objects that contains basically a duplicate of the file and each of these objects takes a 230k of data. Now I will show you how we can reduce the size that these two objects take. But first of all, I want to keep track of this 2 sha one because then after the process, uh, we can see if we still have the same two objects. So I copied these two lines and I will split the screen and keep track of this information at the bottom of the screen. So I passed the two objects here in the bottom of the screen. And now we can finally try to reduce the size of this repository. Reducing the size of the repository is done by a command that is called the git gc, that stands for git garbage collection. And this process is usually automatically launched from git whenever you push your repository to, to a remote or when you have really a lot of objects into your repository. But this can vary depends on your configuration or the tools that you are using. So we will see now how we can uh, execute this garbage collection manually. To execute the garbage collection, we just need to run the git gc command. And we can pass a parameter to this command. This is um, dash dash aggressive. That's of course mean that uh, this command should be a little bit more aggressive on saving space instead of saving a CPU. And we expect now to have a less object or at least a less space into this repository, right? Let's re-execute the command that we executed before to list all the objects that we have. This command tells us that we have still six objects, but what this command doesn't tell us is that those objects are not stored into the object files like it was at the beginning of this video. And we can see this checking directly into the file system. There are no more object file. There is instead one pack file and one index file. And this pack file, it's a binary object that contains inside all the objects that we had before, but in a more efficient way. Also, we have this IDX file that is the index because the pack is a binary file. So we need to keep track of the offset where all the information is stored and all this offset are stored into this IDX file. If we look into this pack file, we should be able to see our old objects, right? So there's one command from Git that is able to show you the content of the pack file. And this command is git verify pack. We can pass the dash b option to be verbose. And then we pass the path of the file. As we expected, this pack contains six objects, contains two comets, two blobs, and two trees. But what is really interesting is that the two blobs, they do not occupy the same space on disk. This blob here occupies 230k, while this one occupies only 15. And why this? Because this blob here contains now only the difference, it does not contain the whole file. And even better, we can see that this blob here 
that start with the 0675 is exactly the same SHA-1 of this object that we stored before. So we know that this one is the, the object with the additional line, so it's the latest object, while this one, that is 06DE, is the oldest object. We can also understand how Git stores this information into the path file, because this here is the most recent version of the file, so we know that inside the pack file there is the most recent version of the file itself, like the full version of the file, while for all the previous commits, Git stores all the difference into a blob that contains again the difference and a reference to the newest version of the file. In this case, just executing the Git garbage collection, we were able to reduce the size of the repository by almost 50%.